If you run a lot of jobs with similarly sized pieces of stock, it's important to make sure that the proper piece of material that corresponds with the current program is the one being currently set up in the machine. Today, I will demonstrate how you can solve this problem by writing a stock check macro program using your Renishaw spindle probe. By probing the stock before beginning machining, you can have the machine check stock sizes against the programmed values within a certain tolerance. If the stock is correct, the program will continue machining. If the stock size is out of tolerance, the machine will alarm out instead of running the program, reducing scrap in your shop. If you would like to further decrease downtime and scrap in your shop, you could also write a macro which will measure the stock and then run the appropriate program for the stock of that size. In this example, if the machine determines the shorter stock has been loaded, it will run program 1, while if the longer stock has been loaded, it will run program 2. Let me go over my code for both of these situations with you. So after I tool change the probe into the machine, I'm going to turn it on with G65 P9832. Then I'm going to do G65 P9810, which is the positioning move for the probe. So I'm going to command it to go to X110 Y0 at a feed rate of 2.5 meters a minute. So you can see here, my X0 is set to the vice stop. And the two options I have for my stock length are 50 millimeters or 100 millimeters. So by commanding the probe to go to X110, it's going to be off of the stock regardless of which piece I put in. Then I'm going to again use the positioning move to go 10 millimeters below the Z surface. Then I'm going to use G65 P9811, which is the measure move. So I'm going to command it to go to X50. Now, of course, uh, I need to be able to hit the surface regardless of which piece of stock I use. So if I put the 100 millimeter in, it'll just hit that. No harm done there. And if I put the 50 millimeter in, of course, I need to command it to go to at least X50 to be able to hit that. So that's why I command it to go to X50 here. So after I touch the surface, it's going to retract back, back to X110. And then I command uh, another 9810 positioning move to go 10 millimeters above the part. Then I return home in Z and turn the probe off with G65 P9833. Okay, so this is the code that will either continue on if the stock is good or alarm out if it's bad. We start with the if statement, which is the logic behind this. If whatever is in these brackets is true, then we will do this. So in here we have absolute value of pound 135 minus 100, that's going to be a number, GT for greater than, which is the comparison, this number, 10. So if this number is greater than this number, we're going to do this, go to line 10. So what is this over here? So we have the absolute value of pound 135 minus 100. So if you look in the Renishaw Inspection Plus manual, they'll give you a table of which uh, what variables correspond to what values. So in our case, pound 135 is going to be the x-coordinate returned after a measure move. Now since my x0 is at the left side, if I'm running a program that needs a 100 millimeter long piece of stock, that x-coordinate of the right-hand side that I probed is going to be more or less 100. And I also put an absolute value so that I can get the tolerance above 100 or below 100. It doesn't matter which sign it is. The tolerance goes both ways. So my tolerance is 10 millimeters. So if the measured value is off by 100 from by either positive or negative 10, then I will go to line 10, which is down here. Right here, pound 3000, that's the alarm That's the alarm code to make custom alarms. So all you need to do is set pound 3000 to any number you choose and put the alarm message in here. So if it fails this, if this is not true, which means the measured side of the stock is within plus or minus 10 of 100, we don't do this and we the program will just continue going like nothing happened. 
So then we get to line to this command to go to line 20, which will jump over the alarm so we don't get stuck there. Then we'll get to line 20 where we will continue machining. Now I'll go over the code that I used to run different programs depending on what the stock size was. So at the beginning here, I'm going to set pound 100 equal to zero. Now I'm going to use the variable pound 100 as my program number variable, someplace to store the program number I want to run. Then I've got three more if statements. Again, these are the logic that will determine what's going to do. So this time, instead of going to use greater than, I'm going to use less than or equal to. So what this is going to say, if the measured number is within plus or minus 10 of the desired number, not outside, because I'm using less than instead of greater. So if the measured number is within plus or minus 10 of 50, then I'm going to set pound 100 equal to 6 for program 6. Likewise, for, then for the second line of code, if I am within plus or minus 10 of 100, then I'm going to set pound 100 equal to 7. Now remember, if both of these statements are false, if I've really messed up and somehow managed to put a 200 millimeter piece of uh, stock in here, then by the time I get to here, pound 100 is still going to be zero. None of these statements happened. So if pound 100 is equal to zero, then I'm going to go to 10, which will just like before be the alarm line. If I have something way, way out of tolerance that doesn't match either of these situations. So then, so after that, I'm going to get to the M98, which is the sub uh, subroutine. Basically what this will allow me to do is run another program inside this program. So the program number I'm going to run is pound 100. So if this statement was true, pound 100 will be set to 6. And when I get to this line, the machine is going to jump into program 6. If this statement was true, pound 100 got set to 7. When I get to this line, the machine will jump into program 7. Once I finish that program, I'll jump out back to the main program. And then I'll get to the M30. The machine will stop and rewind back to the top. I hope this helps you write your stock check program on your Renishaw probe. If you've got any questions, you can contact us at automatedmfg.com.